Paul said, glory be to God is when we breathe our last. Sounds different, doesn't it? Sounds, doesn't sound like exactly what uh, the world people are celebrating, I think. But for us, look, look what it is for Anna, for all the righteous, all the saints. This was the culmination, this was the end of a huge offering. Their life was a big offering, just like we pray that our lives can be a big offering to God. Like, every day, struggle. Every day, a big cross. I often tell the people, you know, who would want to stay here forever? Who would want to live in this life forever? And the elders and the saints of the church already don't live in this life. They're already performing miracles. They're already doing wondrous things. They're already hardly eating, hardly sleeping. Don't, don't require a whole bunch of fuss about things of this life. So that when they take the step, you know, into the next life, when they're dormition, like today's the dormition, the falling asleep of Anna, when they fall asleep, you see, it's like a very small step for these. But for, for those who don't prepare, those who aren't already somehow in the mind of living in the next life. Do you know how big that step is? It's like a canyon. Huh. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm going into a place I have no idea what is that. I have no idea where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm afraid, I'm scared. And you see both kinds of people. You meet every day both kinds of people. Those who are somewhat prepared, because you know, it is, it is ruling, it isn't natural, it wasn't normal for the soul and the body to be divided, right? But it's more, if, if you will, acceptable when we're ready for the spiritual life, when we know that the next life is just like this one. I'm praying, I'm receiving, I'm already in communion with Christ. So what do you think is going to be there at the end of this life? If I'm ready, I'm going to be in communion with Christ. There won't be any need for grace, any need for bread and wine. It'll be the pure communion with Christ. It'll be the pure noetic prayer, even prayer without words. So now's the time to begin like getting used to that. I remember Father Peter Gilchrist used to say, you know, we never, we struggled when we were coming into the Orthodox Church with, guess what, incense. Incense of all things. You know? And then he started reading in the scriptures, in the prophecy of Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and in the book of Apocalypse, the Revelation, there's three or four references there to incense. So he used to tell everybody when they were coming into the church, well, they're using a lot of incense in the kingdom of heaven. You better get used to it now because you're going to have to get used to it. The angels are offering incense before the throne of God all the time. And it's like that with everything. Are you used to the spiritual things? Are you used to the better words like heavenly things. We're experiencing, even in this nice, quiet liturgy, heavenly things. This is normal. This is peaceful. This is, you know, where our hearts are meant to be, to rest. You know, everything out there, who? that's a big distraction from this. So, God forbid, that's all we know. We have to know this, at least somewhat. So that when, like Anna, we're going to rest, you know, until Christ comes again. We're not so scared. We're not so crazy with fear or with, oh my gosh, I left this undone and this undone. You know, we all know people who've been caught, right, unawares. And they leave this life at a very young age. Sometimes they leave this life, by the way, at a very old age. And they're still caught unawares. So, we know people all the time like that. Let's not be those people, and let's inspire people to be born when on the day of their departure from this life. But it's not a death, it's a life. We're going to have the feast of the remission of Anna's daughter, the mother of God, Panagia, on uh, August 15th, coming up. And the hymns of that feast say, she's translated from life, not to death, not even to sleeping. She's translated from life to life. This is the ultimate goal. This is the ultimate pathway for Orthodox.
Orthodox Christians to be translated from life to life as if death is no interruption whatsoever. Do you believe this? Do you believe that this is possible? It is. But it's only possible here in this communion with Christ. Here in this communion in our hearts with the church and with the Lord. Everything else will end out there with the cemetery and with the grave. Only the only everlasting thing, thing is what we take with us. All of God's presence in our lives. So, 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, let's make a big percentage of that not about me and my pleasure and my, you know, opinions and all of that. Let's make a big part of that about my service to Christ, about my service to others, and not about my service to myself. You see? So then, on the day of your repose, on the day of our repose, we'll be lying here in joy. Everyone will be in joy then. Why? Because this person, through their, through the mercy of Christ, but through their offering, through their, you know, giving of their whole life to Christ, got rid of all their sins, washed away their sins in their love of Christ, washed away their sins in their mercy for other people, washed away their sins in their joy to be in communion with Christ. After that, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. So, enjoy this quiet, precious, holy feast of Dormition. And think, you know, as you go now off, there and there, about, you know, that you can take this peace, you can take this communion with you into the world. In fact, you must. You must. Christ is in our midst. Do you want to say a few words? Okay. Thank you, Father. Deep on to be with us today and help us uh, 